Greetings, First Presbyterian Church family. <laughs> this is not the way we thought we would worship today on May 17th. Uh, as you, many of you experienced a few moments ago along with me, Zoom is not fun functioning properly this morning. No, it's not just us, uh, as I emailed out earlier. Colleagues around the world are experiencing the same problem this morning. And so we continue to do our best just as we would adapt uh, if the organ failed on Sunday morning when we were gathering or our sound system in the sanctuary, we adapt this morning as we seek to worship together. Um, so I'm recording this for you and I'll send it out shortly uh, with my greetings and blessings. Uh, but I wanted to share these words of scripture that we were going to share together in my meditation that it may guide you. Our first scripture today was to be Psalm 23, and um, if you do nothing else today, maybe just rest with this psalm. It's so familiar, yet it's so rich. Um, so I'm going to read it, but I encourage you to read it on your own and maybe spend some time meditating on one of the many beautiful images in the psalm. If you like to draw or paint, perhaps spend some time uh, contemplating one of these images and drawing or painting, or if you are a person of words or journaling, journal about what it's like to lie down in green pastures, whatever brings your heart fully into the rest and the peace that God desires for you. But let us hear it together now. The 23rd Psalm. The psalmist writes, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life. And our second scripture this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to John. It's actually an extension of the scripture we read last week, where Jesus appears after his resurrection to the disciples who go out fishing, and he serves breakfast for them on the lake shore, and then follows this exchange with Peter. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to Peter, tend my sheep. Jesus said to Simon Peter a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said it to him the third time, do you love me? And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. This is holy wisdom and holy word for all of us. May God bless our understanding. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this Sunday is the last Sunday in the church season of Easter. And so we're finishing up our sermon series on Jesus' post-resurrection appearances to the disciples. 
We began the series many weeks ago with the Reverend Dr. Jeff Japinga reflecting on how often we are like the disciple Thomas. We want to believe with our whole hearts that God is still making the world new, but we also deeply desire to see evidence of that new life for ourselves. Today, we sit with Jesus and Simon Peter on the lake shore. And Jesus asks Peter, not once, not twice, but three times if Peter truly loves Jesus. And three times Peter insists, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. The threefold asking calls to mind the last time Peter was asked a question three times. That time Peter answered, of course, in the negative, famously. On the night of Jesus' arrest, as soldiers drag Jesus from one authority to the next, Peter follows and is questioned not once, not twice, but three times. You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And Peter replies each time, I am not. Some have said that Jesus' threefold questioning on the lakeshore is Jesus' way of offering Peter the chance to repent or make up for his threefold denial. But like scholar Caroline Lewis, I don't buy that interpretation. It doesn't jive with the Jesus that I know. Jesus doesn't ask Peter whether Peter loves Jesus to test or trap Peter. Rather, as Lewis affirms, Jesus asks Peter whether Peter loves Jesus as a way of inviting Peter to reaffirm Peter's calling and identity. You see, at heart, when Peter famously denies Jesus around a charcoal fire on the night of Jesus' arrest, Peter doesn't so much deny who Jesus is. Peter denies who Peter is. Are you not one of this man's Jesus' disciples? Peter is asked, and Peter responds, I am not. And so now... Around another charcoal fire, Jesus invites Peter to leave behind those denials and embrace his identity as Jesus' disciple once again. Peter, do you love me? Jesus asks. Yes, Lord, Peter answers. And Peter's affirmation Peter's embrace of his identity as one who loves and follows Jesus is met each time with an affirming charge from Jesus. Feed my sheep. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. In effect, Jesus says, yes, then go and do. Go and do as I have done. Feed and care for all God's children. Feed and care for all God's children. That's no small charge. That's no small calling. No wonder Peter at first denied his identity as Jesus' disciple. The Lord is our shepherd. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. And now the role of shepherding God's people is passing to Peter and to the disciples and is handed down through the generations of disciples even to us. And so Jesus asks us, do you love me? Jesus asks us, do you love me? For Jesus knows that we too are often like Peter. We, too, are not always ready to claim our identity first and foremost as disciples of Christ, particularly 
in a world where so many powers are vying for our allegiance. We too are not always ready to be shaped by Christ's example of love and justice in all we do when the ways of the crowd would be so much easier. We too do not always feel equipped to take the lead in shepherding God's ongoing work of making all things new. But Jesus calls us. And Jesus knows that we are able. Jesus believes in us just as he believed in Peter. And so Jesus asks us, as he asked Peter, do you love me? And when our hearts well up with a feeble or a fearsome yes, Jesus cheers us on. Yes, then feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Yes, then go and do, go and do as I have done, feed and care for all God's children. It's just that simple. It's just that hard. It is a mighty calling, but we do not undertake it alone. It is our shared calling as Christ's disciples, as those who boldly proclaim, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And though Christ calls us to the role of shepherding, of feeding and tending all God's children here and now, we take heart for we belong to God and the Lord is still our shepherd. God will supply our every need. Goodness and mercy will chase us down all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord our whole lives long. Thanks be to the God who loves us, believes in us, calls us, and sends us out to feed and tend all God's children. Amen. May God's peace dwell richly with you all this day. Amen.